God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I want to thank you so much once again for watching this video. I hope that, that this video and any other video that you may watch will be a blessing to you, that it would be a blessing to your life, and that it would encourage you. Today we're going to talk about what the Bible says about us as Christians being hated by the world. So we are going to read in the book of John chapter 15, verse 18 through 21. It says, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will, they will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. So right there where, you are at, where you're at, if you would join me in prayer. Father God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity. God, I thank you, Father, for this platform. God, I pray, Lord, that you would speak through me, God, that you would speak to us, God, that you would touch our hearts, God, that you would prick our hearts, Lord. We thank you, Father. We love you, and we ask everything in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, Jesus is talking <clears throat> here in John chapter 15 to his disciples. He, um, he's talking to his disciples, but this still applies to us today because we are his disciples. And Jesus says that the world will hate us as Christians. And it, it, he says that we will be persecuted because the world persecuted Jesus. Now, Jesus also says, he says, keep in mind that the world hated me first. Jesus claimed to be God. He did miracles and works on the Sabbath. He wasn't religious like the Pharisees. He didn't follow or agree with the politics of the Sadducees. That's exactly why they crucified him. Jesus didn't follow the ways of the world. He came to save and to change the world forever. The scripture, the scripture also says here in John chapter 15, it says, if you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. You see, if the world loves us, that means we may be too much like the world. According to the Bible, we as, we as Christians shouldn't be loved by the world. Our thoughts and opinions shouldn't be accepted by the world. The Bible also says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Our lifestyle of living holy shouldn't be accepted by the world. If our lives have too much in common with the people of the world, then maybe we haven't been transformed by the renewing of our minds. You know, we've seen over the last couple of years a great divide in this country because, it's, because there's a spiritual battle going on. You know, the Bible says we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. But now, anyone who thinks differently from what the world thinks, or anyone who thinks differently from what is politically correct, is automatically hated and canceled. Anyone who is considered a conservative is hated by society. Anyone who doesn't agree with abortion or same-sex marriage is canceled and hated by the world. What we've seen the last couple of years is just a preview of the persecution that Jesus said would be coming to us as Christians. All the hate that you see you know, these politicians or these Republicans getting, all that hate is going to be coming to us as Christians. Now, a lot of you may not agree with what I'm going to say next, but I believe that the recent political issues that we've had in this country may have revealed that a lot of Christians may be conformed 
by the pattern of this world on certain issues, specifically when it comes to abortion. The world says abortion is okay. The world says that there is nothing wrong with killing innocent babies. Abortion isn't supposed to be political. It's not some bill or some law get, that gets to be debated. It's clear cut and dry. It's, it's black and white. Aborting babies is wrong. It's murder. And it's that simple. We as Christians shouldn't stand for abortion. We should, we should stand against it regardless of what the world thinks. You know, maybe you're a Christian and you don't see anything wrong with abortion. Or maybe you say things like, well, that's not my place, or I don't really have an opinion on abortion. You may refuse to talk about abortion. You may even refuse to post anything on social media and bring awareness to abortion. Maybe because you're worried about what people are going to say or what people are going to or what people are going to think about you i've personally posted about abortion on social media and when i do my post gets one maybe two or three likes and i'm thinking why isn't anyone reacting to this post you know the content can be so powerful and, and so impactful and i don't i can't understand why anybody isn't reacting to it I can post on social media about anything else and it gets 30, 40, 50 likes easy. And that's because my social media consists of almost 100% Christians. And I realized that people are afraid to attach their names to an anti-abortion post, even if they may agree with it. They don't want to risk the hate that may come with it. Many Christians, unfortunately, have allowed the pressure of the world to conform how they think. We as Christians shouldn't worry about being politically correct. We should worry about being biblically correct. I'm going to say that again. We as Christians shouldn't worry about being politically correct. We should worry about being biblically correct. When I got the news that Roe versus Wade was overturned, I was happy. I came home and I told my wife about it. I thought it was a great thing. Now, it's not a complete victory because abortion is still legal in many states. But it's definitely a step in the right direction. Now... Just because someone is pro-life, and I'm, I'm speaking for myself here, just because someone is pro-life, it doesn't mean that I don't have sympathy with the women who may have been raped. I know it happens and, and it's terrible. And when it comes to rape, then we can have a conversation. But when 99% of abortions is not due to rape, then we should address that issue first. I truly believe that if Jesus was here on earth today, he wouldn't just keep silent on abortion. I don't believe he would vote for someone who supported killing innocent babies. I just don't believe he would agree with it. I don't believe he would agree with abortion. And for many other issues, not just abortion, I want to encourage you to think about this. Not just abortion, but I want you to think about any other issue that we may have compromised as Christians because of what the world thinks. It also says here in John chapter 15, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. See, the Bible also says that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Our thoughts, our actions and our lifestyle should be completely different from the world and even to the point where the world will hate you. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that we should be proud about being hated. And that doesn't mean we go around looking to start trouble and, and trying to get people to hate us. But we should live our faith 
with fear and trembling. We should live our life according to his word. In doing so, people may hate you. It comes with the territory because of the name of Jesus. Now, I'm not perfect. I'm nowhere near being perfect. I'm, I'm a work in progress and, and God is working on me. But if people want to hate me for speaking up about abortion or any other issues, especially when it comes to the Bible or especially when it comes to speaking about Jesus, if people want to hate me for that, if the world wants to hate me for that, then, I, then I'm okay with that. We as Christians have to live a life unashamed of the gospel. We have to stand up for what's right. We have to stand up for what's holy because Jesus would have done the same. Even if the world hates you, remember, it hated Jesus first. Now, especially in these last days, we should really stand firm because what we've seen is only the beginning of the persecution that's coming to Christians here in America. I want to thank you once again for taking the time to watch this video. I hope this video has blessed you. I hope it has encouraged you. And if it has, do yourself a favor and do me a favor. Like this video, share this video, and don't forget to subscribe. Y'all take care and God bless you.